everyone, it's Belinda and Matilda again from My Style Journey. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to talk about um, traveling after 40. Yes, uh, sometimes we think traveling is all about seeing new sites, new uh, places, experiencing new cultures and eating some food that we've never even heard of. But we think it's much more than that, that it's about self-discovery and self-transformation. Absolutely. So why would you travel after 40? What would the reasons be? My number one reason would be it takes you out of your comfort zone. And that's what we're supposed to do. Life is supposed to push us a little bit. And that's, that's what travel does. Yeah, be brave. <laughs> and the next point we want to make is it shows you cultural diversity. And when you immerse in somebody else, else's culture for a while, maybe you'll become more tolerant and understand what's going on in their heads and not just live in your own little world. Mm, and I think it makes you a little bit more broad-minded, definitely. Mm. It makes you more interesting as a person. Have you ever been to a party and people are talking about the places they've been to and you haven't been anywhere and you can't talk about it? So I think it just... It, it does make life more interesting and it broadens, as I said, your horizons a little bit more and gives you something more to talk about. Yes, and for me to, to learn how to eat strange food is very <laughs> difficult. So that stretches me a lot, but it makes me much more interesting, I think. Definitely. It also ignites an adventurous spirit within. Yes. <laughs> so it makes us more adventurous. If you've been on one trip, you're going to want to go on more. And travel is the only thing that you can buy that makes you richer. Definitely, I agree. <laughs> Everything else makes you poorer, even the beautiful clothes that you wear. Yes. So next, we will give you some tips on traveling. Okay, so one of my first tips is before you even go away, decide what your budget is going to be. So if you've decided on a place, decide what your budget is going to be and that will determine the kind of accommodation that you're going to stay in. So um, the higher your budget, the better the hotel will be, the lower your budget. Um, you're going to probably do maybe camping or hostels and I think for me personally I will never do a hostel, not having turned 50, it's <laughs> never going to happen. So I'm only going to go on holiday once I've saved enough to stay in a hotel. But there are other options such as B&Bs and guest houses. Airbnb is a great resource if you're looking for places to stay overseas. Yes, I think because we're not young anymore, we don't want to do couch surfing no. and stay with a lot of people and share a bathroom. But <laughs> if that's your jam, go for it. <laughs> don't let us prescribe to you. Yes. Um, the next tip is be financially prepared. So open up your credit card so that when you get there, you are, have access to your money. Only withdraw a small amount of cash for emergencies because most places you can just swipe your card and it's much safer to do. Yes, I agree. Um, just have one credit card that you travel with. Don't, don't open more than one because that's just inviting trouble. If perhaps you're flying to your destination, make sure that you wear comfortable clothes. If your flight is going to be very, very long, for example, if you're flying from South Africa to, say, New Zealand, um, you're going to be flying for 12 hours, possibly even more. And you are going to have a stopover. So you might want to freshen up. So make sure that in your luggage you have something to brush your teeth with. Most airlines will give you that, but it's nice to have your own. So for me, I fly in either a tracksuit or leggings and a nice um, cotton top that doesn't get too hot or too cold. If you're flying for those long distances, it might even be worthwhile taking a jacket or a nice cardigan with you to keep warm. They do provide you with a blanket on the flights, but make sure that you're comfortable. Also wear nice, thick, cozy socks because the planes can get quite cold. And make sure that your shoes are comfortable, that you don't have to struggle to take them on and off. Slip-ons are great, that you can just kick them off when you want to go to sleep. And it's even nice to walk on the plane just in a pair of socks. And then they'll be able to be easily slipped on again when you get to your destination. 
Yes, and then always make sure that you have the correct luggage. If you uh, go into a hotel, um, you might even have to walk a bit, so get those with the wheelies on. Um, even if you uh, don't walk a lot, you'll have to take it some place or somewhere. And if you're backpacking, uh, going hiking or camping, take a backpack. Uh, and that will determine how many clothes you can pack and what the variety <laughs> will be that you're wearing. And also, your luggage must be identifiable. So use a bright ribbon mm -hmm. or a funky tag and even take a pic. Then you can show, if it gets lost or something, you can show it to people. But when it comes around, you must can, can identify it quickly. Um, it's just easier. Another very important point is your identification. Mm. Your passport and copies of your passport and your travel documents. documents, any other travel documents. You need to have copies and keep them safe. And we like to keep our passports with us at all times. Yes, but you don't have to. You can have copies made and keep them with you. It's just that some places overseas like to see your passport when you're buying. Another great tip is to not take your expensive jewellery. So if you have those beautiful diamond earrings, don't take them with on holiday. It's just asking for trouble. It, you might even just lose it on the plane. You might just lose a stud and that'll be devastating. So take costume jewellery with you on holiday. It is just easier. If you do happen to take a nice watch or your wedding ring and you are going out for the day or you're going to the beach for the day, then use the safe in the hotel room or even if you have to leave it in the lobby with the reception in their safe, just mark it well. But otherwise, I would recommend just using costume jewelry. You're going for a limited period of time. You do not have to have your beautiful diamonds and pearls with you. And then decide which type of transportation you'll be using. Um, some hotels have a shuttle service so they can fetch you from the airport um, or you can go by train. Taxis are usually very expensive. Um, you can use a bus, and you can rent a car and Belinda and her husband had scooters one time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that was in Southeast Asia. We were traveling in Thailand. So whatever mode of transport you choose, make sure that you have the right permit for that because that's the next point that we want to say. If you need to get an international driver's license for the country that you're going to, if you're choosing to drive yourself in that country, make sure that your international driver's license, sorry, that your international driver's license is up to date before you leave. If you need vaccinations and um, all your travel um, insurance, Make sure everything's up to date and that you have them with you. Also, once you get to your destination, find out the number of the police or the any emergency services and put that in your phone so that if something happens, you've got that on speed dial. Do that as soon as you get there and also find out where the closest doctors, pharmacy, clinic or hospital is because you never know what could happen. Rather be prepared, don't wait for an emergency before you start looking for these things. Yes, and as soon as you arrive, you can also ask the hotel what kind of tours they have or sightseeing plans or um, any ideas and tips that they have so you can decide if you want it and then you can book it in advance. Some hotels require that, they don't want you at the last minute. Or you can decide to do it yourself. Belinda was speaking about an app that you can say I'm here what is in, the, in my radius of five kilometers or whatever and then you can decide what to do for the day. Any other sightseeing tips? Yeah, well that's, that's a great tip. So there are many apps and um, we'll link some down below but you download it onto your phone and all I did was because I was prepared to walk within five kilometers and I would travel to a specific destination so before I left home before I left the hotel that morning I would put in that destination and then see what was available within a five kilometer radius that I could walk to because when you walk you take in so much more of your surroundings but you can't walk to every destination if you go to the UK especially if you go to London and you want to go and visit castles or 
you know, outlying destinations for the day, you will need to take public transport, you'll need to take a bus there and back. And that is where um, the concierge at the hotel will be of great assistance because they will help you. Um, to set up and to book those tours, which is great. Don't buy gifts at souvenir shops for family at home or loved ones. They're very expensive. Use local markets and local craftsmen. Just be careful in, in choosing your gifts when you bring them home because we were visiting in the Middle East and I brought some beautiful handmade bowls for my stepdaughter. On the way back from the Middle East we had a layover and when I got onto the second plane that brought us to our destination, brought us back home, they took my hand luggage, which, which had all the beautifully wrapped bowls in it, and they just I wrapped it up and they said it must go into the hold because the plane was too small and all my bowls broke. So just be careful when bringing gifts back. Make sure that you don't bring back anything too delicate or too precious because there is a chance that it will break on the trip home. And then also speak to the locals. Don't be afraid to reach out to people. And mm -hmm. I think, especially in South Africa, we're so guarded and um, uh, scared to go out of our comfort zone that we forget. Just speak to people. Just ask questions. I have to disagree with Matilda <laughs> on this point because having travelled quite a bit, People will ask me where I'm from and as soon as I say South Africa, they say, oh, you South Africans are so friendly. And even chatting to, to people in South Africa who have come from other countries, we are really considered one of the friendliest nations uh -huh. out there. So you might feel guarded, but we, the, there are people out there that are even more oh, guarded than us, yeah, especially in Europe. Yes, and I think we're very polite. We, yes, yeah, we we're very polite. polite. We yeah. say so sorry about everything. <laughs> Whenever you hear somebody on a plane or a train or a, wherever you're traveling in the world and they say, oh, I'm so sorry, that's a South African. <laughs> Another tip, Matilda's just reminded me, I have a beautiful camera and I usually take it wherever I go. But it's so cumbersome because I've got a whole lot of lenses. On my last trip, I just made a decision that I'm not going to take my camera with me anymore because you can do so much photography on your phone. If you've got a good camera phone, you can do so much photography on your camera and it takes away that cumbersome extra luggage that you have to carry around with you. Yeah, and you said oh, it's just if you want, if you're going somewhere where there's really great scenery from a mountain top or a great lake or something that you need a really good camera, then you take your camera. But not for just everyday, everyday traveling. Yeah. And then the last point is, don't forget the sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> just like Baz Luhrmann says, <laughs> you're going to be out and about a lot. <laughs> so wear sunscreen every single day. Hey, thanks for watching. It was great sharing these tips with you. If you have any other tips that you can add to this, we'd love to hear from you. Please add it to the comment section below. Ciao, Ciao for now. now.